Hello and welcome to part three of Amazon Web Services and DynamoDB. In the last uh, two lectures, the last two videos that I've produced, we put data into the database and I actually showed a way to put a lot of data into the database. This final one, we're going to get data back out of the database. And the first thing I want to show is how to query on the primary key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a method where I actually do that. So here's my method right here. And I call it query on primary key. And I'm going to pass it two things, the table name and the, and the primary key value. It's very straightforward. And um, actually the whole methodology of it is relatively straightforward. There's really two pieces to doing this. There's the get item request and there's the get item response. So we're going to send a request over to the client and we're going to get something back. Those two pieces. So what we really have to do for the rest of this is put the request and the response together. So I'm going to create a new object by the name of request that is of type get item request, which is an Amazon DB, DynamoDB.model uh, library. To, it's in there. So I create this new get item request and I've got two things that I have to put into, two properties I have to set to make this work. One is the table name, which makes a lot of sense. You've got to know what table you're going to get the data back from. And the other one is the key. So uh, the table name is the table name that I pass to the function. And the key, I'm going to create a new key. Okay, So key is going to be equal, uh, equal to a new key. And um, I'm going to actually have to set some properties of the key. So I have to set the hash key element. And the hash key element is an attribute value. Okay, The attribute values you're going to see over and over again. And the attribute value that I'm going to set to be equal to will be a new attribute value. And I'm going to set the one property of the attribute value. Uh, attribute values have this n, s. s means string for the attribute value. So I'm going to set s equal to the primary key value because it's a string value. So my get item request object named request has two properties, table name and key. My table name is a string. My key is a key. And the key is actually made up of, has the property hash key element set to a new attribute value with its property value of s equal to the primary key value. And that is my request. The reason for such a complex object is to give you flexibility in how you can actually format requests. Because in this case, it's very simple. I'm just going to set the table name and the key. But you can have a lot more complex things that you do. Part one. Part two. OK, now I've created the request. If I call client.getItem, and pass it the request, it's going to send me back a get item response, an object of type get item response. I'm going to call that response and I'm going to get this back. So response is going to contain the response to the request for the information that we asked for. Then I've written a function here that's exactly the same as the function that I uh, found right on the DynamoDB website for printing items. I'm going to send it the response dot get item result dot item. So I'm going to print the item out. I'm not going to go through the print item. It's something that you can actually follow. It's uh, very fairly relatively straightforward. Uh, you can pass in a dictionary of an attribute list. In this case, I've got one um, attribute list that's passed to it. And what it does is it parses through any par uh, pairs that you have in there, and it prints the values out. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, going back up to the query on primary key. If I run it, oh, by the way, I've got to call the function query on primary key. Since this is a console application, everything's going to be running from the con from the uh, main. And query on primary key, I'm going to pass it the housing data is the name of the database. And then I'm going to pass it one of the known ones that I have there. I can look over here at my um, at this, and I can see that I have um, in the table I have a 2006 and then those values. Uh, you know, one of the things you have to do is you have to keep track of those primary key values to be able to work with this. So I'm going to query on it. Okay, if I do this, okay, I'm going to bring this over here. And um, I know you didn't see it because it ran through really fast, but here it returned everything for that specific um, table. It returned all the values there. Okay, so that was relatively straightforward. And there's the ID, S equals, it returns them, in this case, it returns them, I don't know what the order is, it returns them actually. Uh, but you can see that that value is there. And this is the values of all the different things that are in there. So you can pull all that stuff back. Okay, so not too bad, relatively straightforward. And it tells you what type they are too, string, that um, you can see here, 
um, it shows you that YBL is a string with a value of 5. That's what that actually denotes. And if you look at the print, um, you're going to have access to this code through um, the lecture website. You can look at that. Well, that's great. If I know the primary key, I can always pull back all the values that I need. And I have this ability to access them that you can see through the print function. Um, you can actually see very quick, quickly how you get to those individual values because they're coming back in this, in this format um, that's accessible as a list. I'm sorry, as a, as a dictionary with string and attribute values. All right, now, what about if you just need to query on something generally in, in the table that's not the primary key? Well, it's not really a query in this case. Um, oops, I gotta go ahead and stop the program. Okay, um, okay, I've got this other function that I wrote called scan on attribute value. Because when you're querying on something that's not the primary key, it's actually not a query. It's a scan. It does have to scan the entire table till it finds the values that return. So I'm going to look back over here at my data here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find all the primary keys of everything that has BDS, which is this table um, column, equal to 4. Okay, so let's do that. And, and that's, as you can see from the function call, housing data, BDS, and 4. So let's go to scan on attribute value. So in this case, I pass it the table name, the attribute name, and the attribute value. The concept is exactly the same. I send a request, I get a response, and in this case, I actually go through the results of the response and I print them. Now, this was a little bit more complex because in the case of this response, I'm going to get back more than one item. I'm going to get back multiple items because it can return multiple items, and it does it by actually scanning the entire table and finding the matches. Now, this is how you have to do this. The scan request is going to actually have to, is going to have to be formatted because there's more things you got to get. So, first, um, the table name that I'm going to send that I'm going to put with the scan request. Table name is a property of scan request. I'm going to call the scan request a request. So I pass it the table name. I pass it the attributes to get. Now, in this case, I'm only going to bring back the ID. So the attributes to get is a list. I'm going to go ahead and bring back um, just that one specific table column. I could bring back a whole bunch of them, and if I left it blank, I'm going to get them all. But I want to get just those because I want to be able to. I don't want to have this long running through. Um, it's going to you know parse all through everything. Now I have to set up a scan filter. Scan filter is what's going to filter out exactly which what the query looks like. The scan filter is a dictionary of strings and conditions. Okay. So I have to set the strings and the conditions. Now, in this case, I really don't care about the string so much, but what I'm going to do is the attribute name for, for this condition is um, the, one of the things I want to pass to it, and I'm going to actually create a new condition. And a condition is another object, which is just like a scan request, okay, is an object. Condition is an object, and it's one of the objects that's actually part of Amazon FDB. And I have properties of that condition I have to set. So I'm going to set the comparison operator, which in this case, I'm going to set it to equal. But um, if, you, if you can see this, if you actually create a comparison operator, it's got a lot of stuff in the um, comments that go with it that say, you know, you can make it equal, not equal, less than, equal to, less than or greater than, between, not null, null, contains, not contains. So there's a lot of things you can have there. So I'm going to set the comparison operator to e equal to equal, and now I have to set what that equal is. Well, that is the property. Okay, remember my the way I'm saying these things. Comparison operator is a property of a condition. I said it. The attribute value list is also a property of the condition, and I have to set it. It's a list. So I create a new list, and it's a list of attribute values. So I set it equal to be the list of attribute values, and I'm only going to want to set one attribute value. So I'm going to create a new attribute value, and I'm going to set the property S of that attribute value to be the attribute value that I passed over in the function. Okay, it sounds complex, it really isn't. I have to create a request, I'm going to have a response. The request is going to be relatively complex because I have to give the Nate table name, what I want to get back, I have to set up the filter. So if you're comparing this to SQL, in SQL I would have said select um, ID from table name where the attribute value is equal to the value that I passed over. So in other words, the attribute name is equal to attribute value. But here, it's, I have to 
put it all into an object notation, and everything in that object notation has things that have to be set. So the attribute name <coughs> has to be set to equal the values of the condition, so equal to the attribute value. So then when I do this, I get back a scan response by calling client.scan, passing it the request. I'm going to get a scan response back in response. And because it's going to return multiple items, I'm going to actually go through each of the items in a 4-H and print them. So you know what? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run this. If I bring this over and run it, you can actually see um, right here it brought back um, all the IDs of all of the um, table entries that had BDS equal to four. And I can look at this and I can actually check that against the database. But if I, I can go over here to the database and I can look at these and I can see that the first one it brought back was the 2006 0000609 and guess what it's the same one over here and if I actually look through these I'm going to find that they are it did bring me back all those IDs so this is actually where I'm going to end um, the lecture series on Amazon Web Services DynamoDB um, this is a very low level stuff that you can work with but you can create wrapper classes to work with those but essentially now you have the ability to query on items in a table Okay, you can go through any item in the table and return them based on value. And from those items in the table, if you return the IDs, now you can return back whatever you want to in those. And all the information that you need to do this is now in those. So you have the ability to put data into the table and you have the ability to pull data out of the table. Um, deleting and other things that you might want to do, which are not necessarily tremendously complex. Um, if you follow the documentation at Amazon Web Services, um, and you should be able to have no trouble getting through those if you can get through these. It's essentially the same concepts and logics and objects. So hopefully this has been tremendously useful to you. Um, get out there and have a good time working out with this and good programs. And if you're um, working, if you work off my lecture pages, you will have access to all this code that I have written here that does wrap up some of these objects. Thank you very much.